good morning, good afternoon, good day, whatever time of day you're watching this, get ready for another What I'm Reading. Today's theme is love. As you may or may not have guessed, this was supposed to be a Valentine's Day themed video, so I'm only two months late, it's not bad. But I can remember the plots of both the books, so I'm going to call that a win. So today I'm going to be talking to you about A Certain Slant of Light by Laura Whitcomb and Essays on Love by Elaine de Botton. So the first book that I want to talk about today is A Certain Slant of Light by Laura Whitcomb. Now this book was recommended to me when I was in the US earlier this year by two of my friends, Rose and Mia, who are pretty well read. So I normally am quite on board with their recommendations, but I was a little wary about this one at first and was worrying once I read the blurb that I would have to start seriously questioning their tastes. And the reason for that is because although it's a young adult novel, it's a paranormal romance, which is not really up my alley, so I was kind of worried. But I think that the premise of this book is really interesting. Basically the premise of this book is it's about a young woman who dies and becomes what basically amounts to a ghost and she attaches herself to various people and lives uh, through them or lives, watches them grow and die. And uh, after a couple of these people that she has lived with die, she uh, attaches herself to a teacher and while she is living out her life with this teacher, she meets another young boy in the teacher's class who she then realises is actually a light, a ghost, that has uh, taken over that body. And they fall in love and then they have to try and figure out how they're going to navigate this thing, is she going to take over another body, how are they going to be together, all that kind of stuff. It sounds cheesy. And it is. I think I feel like the romance aspect was definitely cheesy. The way that Helen and uh, James fall in love so quickly and they have sex after only meeting each other a few times kind of annoyed me. Uh, I feel like it was like a badly written Mills and Boone in that aspect. But if you can sell yourself on this concept of their loneliness which is explored and this desire for physical touch after so many years without that sensation, then I suppose you can get over that physical aspect of their relationship and I suppose uh, the relationship that develops very quickly. I think if you remove yourself from that aspect, the ruminations on, on life and death and forgiveness and the value of a life well lived, are really interesting ideas that Whitcomb tries to come to terms with and this idea of uh, human existence and there's a philosophical tilt to this book that a lot of paranormal romances don't really have or I feel the paranormal romances that I've read don't really have. From a writer's point of view the execution is well done. The writing in this book is witty and the prose is interesting and there's some lovely references to literature because uh, Helen's character is, I mean she uh, attaches herself to readers and artists and stuff like that and she's very well read herself so there's lots of references to different books and poetry and it's kind of wordy but powerful. So if you can get away from the fact that the actions of some of the characters and the decisions that they make are a little disturbing and the character development is sometimes a little off, the prose and the interesting philosophical thinking that goes around this book make it a good read that I actually had trouble putting down. Uh, it's a quick read as well. I read it in maybe three days because I had so much trouble putting it down and because it's not too heavy as well. So I'd probably give it three and a half to four out of five stars. So the second book on the agenda is Essays on Love by Elaine de Botton, which I actually read as an audiobook in the car. 
Uh, it's a novel about two young people who meet on an airplane between London and Paris and fall in love and it follows the development of their relationship which basically sounds like any other romance. And undoubtedly people will relate to these kinds of initial feelings of expectation and desire, along with the feelings that you might more be involved in the relationship more than your partner is, to what it's like to feel in love, and then what it's like to break up and deal with those kind of feelings as well. And in that way, the story isn't unusual. It's a pretty standard romance. But what lends this book its interest is that Alain de Botton is a philosopher. So the emotions that are involved in the relationship are kind of analysed and explored with this real depth and it kind of comes under a, a philosophical microscope, if you will. And that's what makes this book a lot more intellectual than, say, A Certain Slant of Light or another romance like that. So when I say that everything is explored in uh, real depth, I mean that there is an entire chapter devoted to uh, the nuances and subtexts of a first date. And there's another chapter which deals with the question of how to say I love you and, how to, and when to do that. There's an essay on how uncomfortable it can be to disagree with a lover's taste in something or a lengthy discussion about the role of guilt in love and how that plays itself out in a power relationship. But in saying all this, I really don't want anyone to be turned off by this book thinking that it's really high intellectual deep stuff that uh, you won't be interested in. because. I feel like even though it's got this intellectual and philosophical tilt to it, uh, de Botton's writing is accessible. It's easy to read and it's interesting and he talks about these concepts in a way that isn't alienating, which I enjoy. It's, it's funny as well, it contains these moments of really high humour and I feel like accurately de depicts these frustrations and confusions and joy and pain that comes with being uh, in a relationship with someone else and a romantic entanglement can only bring. It, and it's kind of quite neatly put together with these thought-provoking ideas about philosophy and what it means to be in love and what it means to be human and have a relationship with another human. And those kind of thought-provoking asides make this something more. And a really enjoyable read that I loved because it's this intriguing blend of novel and non-fiction and you can't really tell which one is which. And there's this feeling that even though it's not a true story, de Botton is drawing on his own experiences. And undoubtedly he is. You can't develop those kinds of characters without linking them to something in your life. And those abstract ideas really are blended in with characters and settings that are realistic. So in the end, I think I would probably give this four and a half out of five stars. And the only reason that I wouldn't give it five stars is because of that fact that it can seem inaccessible at the start. But once you get into it, it it really is a good read and I would recommend it to most people. Even as an audiobook, because the guy that reads it has a pretty soothing voice as well. So that's all for today. Uh, I'm hoping to get back to these more often, but I always say that, so don't expect anything. Until next time, bye.